Hi everyone and welcome to the Technical Women in Microsoft Community panel. Today I'm joined by four exceptional women in our community and they're going to talk to you a little bit about their careers and the learnings that they've had throughout. Um, I'm going to be your host, Emily Clark. I'm a Product Marketing Manager at Microsoft UK and I'm now going to hand over to some of our amazing speakers who will do an intro for themselves. So let's start off with Amy. Fabulous. Hi, everyone. My name's Amy Boyd. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, uh, which means that I get to work with developers and data scientists on some of our latest and greatest AI and machine learning uh, services and tools, um, which is fantastic to be that connection between product and community. Great. And over to Sarah Lee. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I talk to a slightly different audience than Amy does. I focus on the infrastructure people or the IT professionals. And what I love about the cloud advocate role is I get to play with technology and help um, share my knowledge with others as well. Great. And Luce? Hey, everyone. So I'm Luce. I am a, a QA these days by day and a tech advocate 24-7. Um, I'm a proud Microsoft MVP and Twilio champion, and I'm probably known as the only person in the world who has a Xamarin shrine in their kitchen. <laughs> Love it. And over to Jesse. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Jesse. I'm a senior power platform consultant at Avanade, um, also a proud business applications MVP. Um, I, uh, I love blogging and I have a YouTube channel. So, yeah, full time advocate as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for all being here today. And we're going to come to some questions in one moment. But first, I just wanted to touch on a few of the different resources that you listeners can basically go to for more information and sort of next steps following on from today's session. So the first one is going to be the Tech Her website. And this has a ton of uh, women specific resources and uh, sort of learning guides that you can go and have a look at. And then we've also got Microsoft Learn, which if you haven't been to before, is sort of our home of learning. Um, it has a ton of different learning paths and different modules and a variety of different topics, which will really help you get started in your technical journey or maybe learn something um, new as well. So please do go and check out both of those resources for you. So I wanted to start off um, by talking a little bit about everyone's career journey. So we've got a question for you each before we move on to sort of some of your learnings. So Jesse, I'm going to come to you first. Um, I'm really keen to know, um, how did you get to where you are now? I'm going to use that technical statement to say you fall into your career. And that's definitely something that happened for me. Um, so to give a bit of background of where I started. So I studied something called Morse at the University of Warwick, which is essentially a maths degree. Um, so I knew that I liked maths and I knew that I liked data and I started a graduate job at uh, British Telecom and I was really just doing data analytics there. Um, and then I came across these Power Platform tools and I loved it. Like I started using them and I was like, this is great. Um, you may have heard the term low code, more power. Um, and that, you know, that was great because I hadn't, I didn't come from a computer science background. I, I didn't come from that typical coding background. And yet here I was building apps building reports um yeah with low code more power um so yeah um so fast forward without going through all the various steps that kind of brought me to where i am today introduced the power platform started working um at kind of avanade and yeah so yeah really loving this uh this falling into my career Amazing. And it's great to hear that obviously you didn't come from a technical background. You didn't do the typical sort of computer science um, degree and you still sort of found your way into the world of technology. So thank you. That's really good. And hopefully that will inspire some of the people listening today. Um, you know, you don't have to have just done a computer science degree to to come into the world of technology. Um, next, I'm going to come to Sarah. Um, so why did you choose um, technology as a career? I kind of ended up um, a bit like Jess in technology because other people saw that I was the friends and family tech support and decided that it would be an actual um, good thing to follow that in my career. I initially wanted to be a farmer, so I had envisioned going to agricultural college and going down that route. 
Ironically, my parents and career advisor all said that that was a male dominated career and I should think about something else. So that's how I ended up in tech. Um, very different. Um, but I love that. I love being able to help people solve their problems with technology using my knowledge to help them better um, do things in their day job or even just unjam that printer um, that they have. Um, and I think that's just it's just something fun. I would love to in the future try and combine technology with farming and um, maybe when I grow up and become an adult but um, yeah at the moment I just love sharing my knowledge around technology. Amazing and such a, a I guess two very separate career paths normally and um, so no that's really really cool and I guess what made you other than sort of being the fixer of everyone else's problems really decide technology would be the right thing for you versus something like farming? I think it was just that it was fun um, and my parents coming from that farming generation as well saw that there was not necessarily a good career due to the way the farming industry was going and said that the tech industry would be much more stable um, for me to go down. So it was just, um, yeah, it was it was their knowledge and their learnings of maybe years of struggling in farming that pushed me into a non-farming career, to be honest, Emily. No, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And I can definitely relate to being uh, the tech support person for my friends and family, even though I'm not technical and definitely know, do not know how to solve things despite working at Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> I think we all get some of that some of the time. Um, Lisa, I'm going to come to you next. Um, how did you feel about working in a male dominated industry? Uh, so for me i th i think i was somewhat oblivious because i think i'm a little bit on the autistic spectrum so sometimes i don't always notice things so at first i took it quite matter-of-factly that it was oh you know like when i was at college doing a vocational it course in my second year i was the only female in my class and i sort of i noticed it but it never really sunk in with me but i think as i've networked with more people and are now much more involved in the tech community I found more, you know, women around me who've kind of pointed things out to me and it's made me more aware of it. So I think I wouldn't say it bothers me per se, but it's just made me more aware that there's people around me who maybe notice it more than I do. And I think for me, it's more about being an ally with them and just making sure that no one's ever made to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And, and I guess you've also mentioned there about being on the spectrum. Like, do you feel like technology is a, a good place to be and supportive for people like yourself in that area too? 100%. So like my journey into tech, literally, I always say that tech chose me. It Like I've blogged about this before and I'm very open about it. Discovering tech and coding actually saved my life because I made my first ever real life long term friends because someone took me under their wing to teach me coding and it kind of went from there. And from that point on, it's always been my career path. Um, and yeah, so I'd say that tech makes a huge difference. And one of the projects that I demo the most at talks I give is uses cognitive services to look at um, emotion recognition on faces and also text um, analysis sentiment in like text and stuff, because I realize I'm not very good at it. And so it's bringing the two together to help me practice. Amazing. And I'm sure there's other people out there that would be really inspired to think about actually, you know, this is an area where I think some people on the spectrum, you can just really master your your art and your craft in technology. And actually, there's a ton of other people like yourself that do so well in technology sort of because of actually their differences in that respect. And I think that's what makes for me technology such a great place to work is that you have this massive variety of different skills and people from all different backgrounds. Um, and it yeah, it just for me, it makes it a great industry to be in. So thanks, Luz. Um, so the other, next, just quickly say oh, that the other the other thing that I'd say is a uh, tech changer is emojis. Oh, reading what people mean <laughs> is so much easier when people stick emoji in the sentence. If they're putting a laughing face, I know we're all right. <laughs> you know what? I'm an overuser of emojis. I think the laughing Me crying too. face is my favourite one. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to come to Amy next and I would love to know what you're most proud of um, in your career to date. Oh, th this one was um, a hard one when I was thinking about it before. I was like, oh, I, 
if I was to go along like the soft skills sort of side of it, I'd actually say uh, my confidence is probably the thing that I'm most proud of. Um, if people had, if if people from school that I went to school with were watching this uh, right now, they might be like, what? Like she does public speaking in front of hundreds or, or even thousands of people. Um, she puts herself out there online, um, shares her thoughts and ideas and her understanding. I used to be so, so shy. So that would have been like, like just such a confusion. But I think having the opportunity in tech to like um, join two different things that you're really passionate about and just get you know, really excited about something and build something uh, with your own hands is, is something that kind of gave me confidence along with the experience. And then I guess one other bit that I definitely wanted to put in here was uh, some of the projects I've had a chance to work on. Technology is everywhere. Like it's literally in ev almost every single area of life. And so the things that you do can impact on an app like on a huge scale and so that's kind of one of the things I had a chance to work on um some data around uh epilepsy and we did some kind of like, like um findings I became like the Sherlock Holmes of data which I love doing and kind of investigating and uh, yeah it was just it was just really exciting to go away from that and be like wow like I, I can help even though I'm not in healthcare or I'm not you know someone who can sort of um, physically help with other skills maybe technology is something I can help with so there is this like ability to really impact people which uh which is yeah something pretty proud about actually being in tech amazing and I know Satya and Adela always say sort of every tech uh, every company is a tech company and it is actually amazing to think about all the different organizations around the world leveraging technology to help sort of make a difference um, so no, 100%. And I actually love on a completely other spectrum, um, Amy, you were part of, uh, you You love Love Island, if I'm allowed to say this. And uh, one of the things that you did was sort of brought that passion together to actually work on some data analysis around the programme as well. Do you mind telling me more about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the, the idea of bringing passions together is really where um, technology lights up, I always think. So um, I actually started, so I, I went um, via university and I did study computer science. And so as my final uh, project, I actually tried to predict the outcome of the X factor um, using social media data, which at the time uh, was was quite like a new thing it's not quite as sort of new anymore but one of the fun things about that was I was so passionate about it that I was able to just like throw everything into it and then so a few you know come a few years later a reality tv has moved on we're no longer watching as as many singers on tv even as many many shows still like that but now uh, Love Island became a huge part of every June in my life uh, for a good few years and so I was like, to be honest with you, there's patterns here, right? And so with patterns comes data science and the ability to explore these patterns. And so uh, I applied this to something that I love. Was it an excuse to, you know, watch it every night at nine o'clock and, and note data down on everything? Yeah, I guess it was. But it was fascinating to actually dive into it and see that over the series, how things have changed or What's the likelihood that you're going to win the show? And so I found these four different patterns, basically, in how you might go about winning Love Island, uh, if, you, if that was of interest. A uh, little bit disappointed we haven't been able to see it this year. So I hope I can come back and do even more findings in the future or choose a very different show, maybe. Maybe it's time to move on uh, to, to something else, but it is it is exciting. Um, it draws a lot of attention as well onto the fact that um, data science or even technology doesn't have to be that kind of thing that we all think it is, where, you know, whether it's, you know, specifically in finance or it's specifically in a certain area. This was reality TV. Like, it was so it just not something necessarily that people would think of but when you start applying really you know obvious data technologies that we do use in all those interest industries to a problem like that it really lights up for people that you you can apply data science to pretty much uh, anything amazing thanks very much amy and uh 
You know, I, I love your Love Island uh, blog <laughs> post. So uh, fingers crossed it does come back. Um, next up, I'd love to have a look at uh, some of the different learnings that we've all had throughout uh, your careers. And so I want to start off with uh, Luce this time and understand a bit more about um, sort of what you've learned along the way and what you could share with other women and girls and and basically what would help them. Uh, I think the main thing is don't be afraid to be yourself and be open. You know, obviously being a you know notoriously male dominated industry, you might feel like you come across challenges where yeah, you have to fight a bit harder to be listened to or taken seriously. But if you just put yourself out there and be yourself, you'll find other people out there who are allies, whether it's other women in tech or even, you know, males who are allies and believe that we're all equal. Yeah, you just be yourself and try your best because there's things that we all have in common, regardless of our gender identity, whether it's you know things like imposter syndrome, for example. I suffer from that quite badly, but I also know people of all sorts of gender identities who suffer from it. So you know, you just got to be open with the, with the struggles that you face because you'll find people around you, kind of you know like-minded people will come together, and you'll find yourself surrounded by people who lift you up and make you feel supported. And you know that's when sort of the world's your oyster, and you can do anything you put your mind to. I love that. And does, has there been anyone maybe um, throughout your career that's really given you that confidence, maybe a mentor or someone that's helped you? Oh, so many. I think um, for public speaking, I'd have to say Jim Bennett, who's a, a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft as well. He's actually kind enough to travel when he was living in the UK to travel all the way from Reading to where I live just to support me in my, my first ever public speaking um, like gig, as it were. Um, so, you know, he helped me practice and came just to support me, which was just wonderful. Um, and then as a friend of mine who goes by, oh, I'll put I'll put a link, I'll share a link, but there's a, someone called White Panther who streams on Twitch a lot. She's very much encouraged me to stream more often, set a schedule. And, yeah, you know, there's just different people in my life who've come along and just improved it infinitely just by being themselves. Amazing. And I um, I know you've been a speaker at lots of different sort of community events. We've seen you at places like NDC. Um, how have you sort of built up your confidence to to be able to do something like that, aside from the, the mentors and the people that have helped you? Practice <laughs> is what it comes down to. The more you do it, the easier mm. it gets. And also, I'd say if something goes wrong, embrace it. You know, if you forget to make your sacrifice to the demo gods before you go live, just just roll with it. Make a joke out of it. Stuff does go wrong. You know, I've had things from updating Visual Studio two hours before I go live and breaking Xcode so I couldn't deploy to iOS and things like that in talks or IntelliSense stop working. You know, these things happen and they interrupt your flow. But once you get those stumbling blocks out the way and find ways to get through it, you realise that it just makes you much more relaxed in future because you think, well, you know, if I can swan it, as I call it, so you look calm on the outside and sort of, you know, paddling quickly underwater um, secretly, it, it just gets a lot easier. You've just got to believe in yourself and give it a go. Amazing. And I guess the more you practice, like you say, the, the easier it becomes, but also embracing those learnings and, and potentially like failures as well I know some of the the areas that I've learned the most is when I failed and you then sort of come back a bit stronger and you're able to tackle those better the next time around so no that's really Absolutely. great advice yeah and uh next up I want to come to Jessie um so I'm keen to understand what the best thing about being a woman in a highly skilled tech role is bringing that diverse thinking um so the diversity piece is really important, like being someone that thinks differently, whether it be uh, racial um, kind of differences or gender differences or, you know, all the all the special ways that we are different from each other. Um, yeah, really does do that. And being able to um, inspire the younger generation is definitely a great thing. And also just meeting um, like minded people in general, you know, not putting that down to just women or men or any anyone just being able to meet um, other people that are interested in the same things that you are and perhaps think in a, a, a different and same way in which you think about as well um, and also I guess in tech especially there's you know such a big kind of social media presence and um, such a keen thing about 
kind of your por portfolio and your brand. And that is you know, highly exciting. Um, not to say that other industries don't have that, but especially with tech. I mean, I joined Twitter for my job, which is insane. So, I mean, I use Twitter solely really for kind of my tech and power platform. And yeah, so that's the most, uh, the best thing about being a woman in tech. Great. And you mentioned there sort of getting to inspire others. Is there anything that you feel that um, other people could do more of or things that you enjoy doing that help inspire that younger generation to consider uh, careers and roles in technology? Sh sharing your story, for sure, and also um, kind of inspiring from uh, a younger age. I know that now in school, coding is quite common and things are changing. Um, obviously, you know, I always... I always always kind of makes me think back like I've started uh, recently kind of looking into like uh, the history and the history of women's um, rights and everything like you know 100 years ago women didn't even really work in the same way that we do so we've come an insane way in terms of where we are now um, but there is obviously still a long way to go in some aspects it's just yeah kind of looking back in the past can help us um, be proud of where we've come and how far we can go as well. Amazing. And in terms of your community engagement as well, is there anything that you do um, there to help bring uh, women into uh, technical communities at all? Um, not specifically, but any kind of events where um, kind of STEM women events that are presented at, or, you know, even this, it's, it's all something I love to do. Um, but I think also having like a female mentee and the mentoring uh, part of that is, is really a good thing. Um, yeah, that I like to strive for as well. Amazing. I know so many uh, young girls, maybe at school, just think, oh, it's it's a it's a boy's place to be, or it's it's something that men will do. But actually, you're so right. Having that diversity of thought, having lots of different ideas, and people come together and work together to basically build something better than it would be just with sort of one viewpoint behind it, it makes it so much stronger. And I know at Microsoft. Um, you know, we're, we're really keen to do anything we can to help more women get into technology as well. So thank you, Jesse. Um, over to Amy. Um, what's the most challenging thing you've been faced with and how did you overcome it? Oh, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hard, right? Because I am um, very happy with being in the tech industry and I've always really, really enjoyed it. Um, there are some challenges uh we don't want to just always say like everything's fine everything's fine like um obviously it is male dominated so um you will find yourself in rooms uh, full of people that don't always necessarily look like you um but that's okay like there is a it's like a two-sided coin like sometimes uh i think it makes you the most memorable person in the room uh which is actually quite handy sometimes someone will remember uh, me maybe over you know a whole set of people um, who who are all uh, very very similar and so that, that's kind of the good side of the coin. The the other side is we that I I do it right. Everyone does it. We make assumptions. Um, I have had that quite a lot. Um, I've aged horribly in the last year potentially, but I did used to look quite young uh, as well as being a female in tech. Um, and sometimes that that does go against you a little bit because we all make immediate first impressions or assumptions around who is the technical person in the room or um or unfortunately start standing on um on a stage and presenting we do do a lot of feedback which is often incredibly useful but sometimes it can come back and it can just like sting a little bit almost when th there's maybe sort of comments that say things like Oh, um, oh, look, it's me. How exciting. Uh, see, I did look a lot younger, didn't I? That wasn't even that long ago. It's very worrying what this last year has done. But, um, like, you know, there can be comments that say things like, oh, like, she actually knew what she was talking about. That's one that has hurt, like, quite a lot, where it was like, you, you can't, you can't correct that. You can't make that change. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, like, people provide feedback and I'll always try to take it on where it seems right to take that feedback on. And so, yeah, un unfortunately, there is still a lot of that. I One of the good sides of this is um, 
having a lot of support from the team you're around. So I remember after that, like going to a speaker room. I love speaker rooms. I miss speaker rooms uh, where, where speakers at conferences will get together and you'll be able to have a chat and it's quite calm and you can talk about what you're going to be, you know, uh, speaking about at conferences and events. And uh, you can kind of go in there. And I remember going in there and people just making me feel wildly better about the whole thing and just being like, it doesn't, it's one person's opinion. Like don't even worry about it um so yeah it, it, there are still assumptions assumptions are, are totally natural i think potentially um surrounding yourself with great people um as well as people who will pick you up when you need to be picked up is is always a really really positive part of tech as well oh yeah. look me just grabbing a pair of shoes yeah so this is my take on technology <laughs> i always bring my personal life into it <laughs> I love that. Wasn't this your uh, your app that allowed you to find? Uh, was it identify it was. objects in your wardrobe or something like that? Yeah, this was Jesse. This was a power app. This was one of the first power apps I made, and I remember asking you about it. Actually, we had a really good conversation about this. But yeah, I, I basically made an app where I could take pictures of items in my wardrobe, and I could catalog them because I'm a bit organized like that. But then also one of the things I started to expand into was then being able to take pictures of things in shops when we were, you know, uh, when they were open. Uh, this, this was a while ago and be able to categorize them as well. So then I had like a wish list because my wish list always has too many like bags and shoes. And so like all the accessories, but I had nothing to wear. And so I would then be like, no, no, like, what are all the nice tops that you've seen or all the nice uh, trousers or, or dresses or something like that and so for me that was something that was incredibly useful and it's fascinating how many people you find that also think it's useful so um who knows it's uh, it's kind of stalled that up a little bit um but you know it's uh, applying ai to a real life situation Love it. And um, I also liked your comment around assumptions, because I think, like you said, we're all guilty sometimes of oh, yeah. trying to judge someone maybe well, far too quickly. Mm. And actually, I think there's a lot everyone could learn from just, you know, waiting to make a judgment about someone until you you know them or you've listened to their talk, or you understand more about their background um you know we we live in a society where it's very easy to tweet and to make comments behind a keyboard and actually sometimes we forget about the person that's going to read that or see that too so I think that's really important um and I, I actually want to come to Jesse as well on that question in terms of something that's been challenging because I know you had some thoughts around um something you've experienced too um, so, I mean, this this isn't kind of something that happens very often, but it, it does happen sometimes when there's an assumption that the developer or the tech person will be male. So I've been in conversations where we're, you know, we're talking about a resource that hasn't joined yet. And yet the word he or him or what will he be doing when he joins um, was kind of mentioned. And it, you know, it completely took me by surprise because I thought, you know, we haven't actually identified who this person will be. And therefore, you know, I had to come in and be like he or she, very obviously, to kind of call someone out on that comment. Um, I've been on calls before when someone's, um, and again, it's, I guess, it's that whole majority versus minority. So um, being in a male dominated environment, you are sometimes on calls where you may be the only female. And I've been on a call before when someone said, thanks, gents. And again, I've just been like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and ladies. <laughs> and so I guess a piece of kind of, I guess you can call it advice or um, thoughts on that is, you know, never be afraid to call that out. You, you need to keep calling it out. We're not, you know, we're not in a perfect world and these things will happen. Um, so yeah, do not, yeah, don't be afraid in speaking up and, and calling people out when they make those comments. Yeah, I've recently heard um, we did some training internally and it was about the use of the word guys, like guys is almost used interchangeably sometimes to mean girls or men um and I think even something as subtle as that in terms of just being aware of how you address people in the room is is really important and and something that people don't naturally think about because you've almost been conditioned that you know maybe a doctor is male or a developer is male a nurse is female and it's almost like undoing some of those biases and mis 
misconceptions about the world that we live in today. So yeah, completely agree on that too. Um, our next one's come to Sarah. Um, so in terms of anyone wanting to start out in technology, do you have any advice for them, maybe places to go or um, you know, resources to access, et cetera, things that you found useful um, as well? Um, I think some of the resources that I used were more community resources when I was starting out, um, using the internet to learn how to build my own PC or fix that printer at home. Um, nowadays, we obviously have, and I think you called it out at the very start of this show, Emily, um, Microsoft Learn, which is a great platform. Um, it obviously is Microsoft, so I'm slightly biased, but it is a great platform for learning new technologies and, and building on that skill. I use it every day. So there's there's something for everybody on that platform. Um, I think technology is one of those careers that can help you do whatever you really want to and and help you travel like i've traveled um, massively for my job and um, because technology how you use your pc here in the uk here how i use it in scotland is the exact same as, as how someone in england uses it or someone in australia uses it so technology gives you a massive um scope if you want to um build in some travel and stuff like that so don't be frightened to you know learn stuff and ask questions because there's a whole host of people nowadays um, that are creating content as well as um, you know blogs and, and videos and all that kind of stuff so there's tons of information out there that you can gather regardless of who's teaching that kind of content so just just don't be frightened to ask um, and try stuff um, yeah I think I've I built a few PCs in my time and blown up a few PCs in my time and I've had to ask friends um, on how to fix them and stuff and that's the way you learn right you learn by doing and by breaking stuff and asking questions so you'll find that most people are quite happy to give you their time and advice if you are genuinely um, looking to learn if you're genuinely looking to get them to do something for you instead they probably might not help you but if you're looking to learn then I've come across lots of people in the IT industry that are more than happy to give their time to the next generation or their peers to help share that knowledge and, and and ultimately make the IT industry much better. Amazing and I know um, you obviously run a user group as well up in Scotland is there um, anything maybe we can take away from that for others to you know maybe join communities or, or reach out to community leaders? Yeah the, the Glasgow is your user group was something I founded in 2017 now because I wanted to learn about Azure and there was no user groups in Scotland and at the time blogging resources and YouTube resources weren't um, readily available so I set up this community to help share um, my knowledge and gain knowledge from the local community. Um, I actually got my job at Microsoft through this user group. So there are amazing um, facilities to actually be able to network with people. You know, someone came along to the user group from Microsoft, saw the stuff I was doing, saw some of the projects I was working on and recommended me for my first job at Microsoft. So the, the learning opportunities are amazing at these user groups and also the ability to network and build on that network um, and potentially get the next career move are, 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 are amazing. So there's lots and lots of user groups. It's not just the Glasgow Azure user group. There's ones up and down the UK um, and there's also ones globally as well. So they're definitely a great resource to tune into. Um, I would say they're better in person. I think we'll all agree that these kind of events are better in person, but lots of them are running virtually. So you can still take advantage of them today as well. Yeah, and I think actually the benefit of them being virtual is you don't even have to leave your home, right, to to hear from someone as amazing as Scott Hanselman or <laughs> any of yourselves. Like they've now got um, speakers obviously joining yep. communities across the world. Amazing. Okay, that, those were all the questions that I actually had to ask you today, but I wanted to open it up and see if there was maybe any additional comments from any of you around anything that we've discussed today, any areas you wanted to dive into further. So I'll start with Luce. Is there anything that you feel you wanted to share as part of this that we've not? Yeah, I'd yet? say just to back up what Sarah was just saying about, you know, I think it's almost an amazing time to get into tech because there's so many different places you can now go to consume content. You know, like Sarah said, whether it's blogs, but there's also YouTube videos, Twitch streams, you know, um, as I mentioned before, White Panther, who streams a lot, she she streams multiple times a week, and that's, you know, somewhere you can learn. There's lots of other science and tech streamers as well. Like, I stream on Twitch three times a week. Um, 
yeah, but there's the whole science and tech category. There's, you know, like I said, YouTube videos and all sorts. It's an amazing place to go. And just never forget that there is no such thing as a silly question. The only type of silly question is the one that you're too afraid to ask. Agreed. And you know what? I remember joining Microsoft as an intern several years ago now, sadly. But one of the things that I was most nervous about was asking questions. Um, and I just I didn't want people to think I was stupid or I didn't know what I was doing or to go, why are you here, Emily? You don't belong. And so I put myself on sort of the back foot for quite a while, being really scared to ask people questions, questions that actually lots of other people in the room wanted to know, too. So I think that is a really key bit of advice for anyone is don't be afraid to speak up and, and ask those questions because you'll be helping other people learn as well. Um, and I also wanted to um, ask the same question to Jesse. Is there anything um, you would like to discuss further? I know you've got a YouTube channel. Do you mind, um, or some videos, do you mind telling us a little bit more about that as well? Yeah, of course. Um, I really loved what Lou said about the demo gods and things going wrong <laughs> in presentations. Like, you, I mean, the first time I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And you kind of stumble through it. But when it goes wrong a couple of times, you just end up laughing about it and kind of getting through it. And yeah, just... It's okay when things go wrong. So yeah, this is um, a video called My Professional Journey. So my uh, YouTube channel is called uh, Jesse's Power Channel, um, and I post uh, most about the Power Platform. But this one in particular, um, it's actually a power up. What you're seeing on the screen. So I use the technology itself to actually kind of go through the various elements um, of my. So you can see here it's a power up of my career, and um, kind of a few snippets there, and I've got some key advice at the end. And I'm just calling out a few points, especially in the in the key advice is I think building your portfolio is is a really key one. Um, I think I mentioned earlier as well. And in order to do that, Microsoft have a lot of great certifications. Um, so that's one way you can kind of have that tangible piece. Um, and also, yeah, just being yourself like I can't say that enough. Um, being yourself is so important in, in this kind of industry and in any career. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. Um, and Sarah, the same question to you. Is there anything else you would like to um, share with our audience today? I think sometimes the IT industry gets gets labelled as this male dominated environment and it puts off the next generation. Um, but hopefully by what you've seen today, there's there's a million great stories of women in tech and how you can actually do it. So don't put those negative connotations around the IT industry, put you off because it can open up many doors and it is getting much better. So please don't let it put you off if you're thinking about um, joining IT as a career and we'd love to do it because it's, it's amazing. And I think we'd all agree um, we've all had great fun um, in the IT industry. Yeah, and coming from such different backgrounds as well, there is no set journey to being... Uh, in technology so it's it's really great to hear just today I didn't realize Sarah that you um sort of have this ambition around farming and uh, Jesse having done a, a maths degree like it just shows that there's lots of different routes you can you can all take to sort of get to this point if it's an area that you're interested in um, and Amy last but not least is there anything else you want to to add on for today um, yeah, kind of piling on a little bit, Emily, to what you said, uh, when you said like, oh, you used to be worried about like asking questions. I was that person as well. Like he was always just like, oh, like, I bet no one else wants this question to be answered. Like, again, assumptions, right? Always assumptions of um, what people might know or um, or actually often as well, what people don't know, because people will still sit there even though no one understands what's going on. And unless someone says, actually, sorry, can you just clarify what that means? And everyone goes, yeah, no, I don't get it either. Like you are all in the same boat. And so I kind of just wanted to leave with the phrase, um, don't be a know-it-all, be a learn-it-all. So uh, learning is all about basically being able to say, I don't know that right now, but it doesn't mean that I can't know it in the future. I can't learn it. Um, also, being a know-it-all kind of tends to hold people back. So that was kind of one of the pieces. I think it was only when I finally graduated. And even then, there was huge parts of me that was like, no, I am I am technical. Like, 
Yeah, no, I am. When people would ask, whereas I think I'd always been so concerned about not knowing everything. Um, it's not possible to know everything in tech because tech moves so fast as well. So uh, picking your areas, getting hands on um, and then working on things you're passionate about. Uh, be, be someone who's going to learn all the time. I love that. And I think one of the things that's really drilled into us at Microsoft is that sort of learn it all culture. You're right. You can't know everything. There's no possible way that you could. Um, so just being really open and, and happy to learn from others and resources online. There's so many different things that you could go and have a look at online right now. Just even Microsoft Learn on its own has so many different learning paths. And as someone that has come from a, a more businessy background, um, I've done some of the fundamentals courses and really it's taught me so much. I know, Amy, you um, helped me out with my AI fundamentals, um, but I, I just love the fact that I could go online sort of at my own pace and sort of pick up a new skill and understand it in more detail. And then there's the next step for anyone that, um, you know, wants to continue that learning journey as well, which is really fabulous. Um, so sort of to, to wrap up, we're almost at time. Um, I think some of the keynotes that I've made today is that, you know, we've, we've all come from very diverse backgrounds and that is very much celebrated within technology. Um, whether you're a man, woman, whether you've got a different gender identity, um, you know, age, none of those things really matter in the same sense for technology. Come as you are and, and sort of just do what you love, I think is one of the very many mantras at Microsoft. And I think that makes it such a great place to work because you can you can be who you are and, and bring your authentic self to work. Um, I love that you can bring your your passions together. Amy, the fact that you've brought shoes and technology together just, you know, it makes my heart uh, glow. <laughs> I think there's um, so many different opportunities. You don't have to just see it as um, I don't know. You, you can make it what you, you want it to be, which is really fantastic. Um, testing assumptions. Um, one thing that everyone should take away from today is if you're listening to others, if you're meeting new people, do not judge them. Let them have their say, like, like get to know them before you start to make those judgments. And I think that's really, really um, something that we could all do. Um, and be your authentic self, turning up as yourself and not being afraid to shine through as who you are, because, again, that makes such a difference to your your work life and how you come across as a person too. I know that if I sort of try and hide my authentic personality, I, I do not do my best work. So definitely some really good advice from the team there. Um, and then the fact that technology, you can, if you enjoy problem solving, I think this is a great place to really be. There's so many different areas you can apply technology to. Um, and so having that opportunity is um, really fantastic too. So no matter who you are um, watching, no matter what route you're currently considering going down, know that technology is definitely there if it's, an, um, if it's something of interest for you. And um, I really hope that you'll take a look at some of the resources on our Tech Care website and also Microsoft Learn to start that conversation. And I know our um, Microsoft Twitter uh, channel as well would love to hear your thoughts about today's session and uh, maybe what more we could be doing for you. So that's, I think, at MS Dev UK. Um, so I think that's everything from us. But thank you so much and uh, happy International Women's Day.